I've built a few things on my channel, but I haven't really ever gone overkill with things, which is usually my tendency when I have time and the resources. So this one, I said, screw it. I'm going to build a table that nobody else can have, make it beefier than I could ever buy because the router lifts themselves are ridiculously expensive, like 200 bucks plus, And I don't have that money. I'm willing to invest in that right now. never built hardwood furniture before at all, although I've built a lot of wooden structures before and I'm pretty confident that I can pull this off. So I've had kind of a domino of projects that have happened to me. I started out trying to build a walnut bookshelf for my son because his other bookshelf collapsed and books have kind of been everywhere for about a year now. So when I started trying to build the bookshelf, I was thinking I'd do some styles out of eight quarter walnut and then route a three quarter inch slot along the inside of it so I could frame some plywood. And one of the things I ran into is that the router I have is notorious for walking and wobbling and doing all kinds of crazy stuff because I didn't have a router base plate on there that was large enough. It just ate out little random pieces inside the wood and chewed out little notches in it and didn't make a straight slot. So now I'm forced to try to fix it. Fix it! <laughs> the only way I can think of to fix this is to build a router table. They can work for a lot of people, but I really don't care for the plywood construction tabletop thing. I really wanted to recess it into my workbench so that I can make a router lift out of it. I just decided I was going to use some machining know-how to just make my own. She's a lovely bench. The first step of this process is I already have the length and width of the plate. I'm gonna trace that profile onto the table and cut out a hole all the way through. And then I'm gonna use a template to use a flush trim router bit to cut a recess around the top side of it, which would be kind of a counter bore. And then I'll rest that plate on top of that shelf. And then we'll probably use some uh, threaded inserts to screw it in so I can take it out whenever I want to. I will reinforce this table later and turn it into an ultimate workbench of some kind. Who knows? It's the fad here on YouTube, right? I'm gonna build in a router table to this. It won't have its own riser. It's gonna have just the router case that I'll just manually raise and lower. And then eventually if I wanna add the hardware and linear guides and screw to raise that router by itself with a axis from the top, I can do that later with the plate that I'm planning on making. So it should be fairly adaptable and customizable as we go.
So last night I was able to get a couple things done. I got the template done for the outer shelf for this plate to recess into. I got this radius jig that I've been kind of working on on my 3D printer mocked up and ready to go. There's some issues with clearance, like it sticks out a little bit, a few thousands off the side either way. I'm going to use this to guide the router to cut a radius on the edge of this because whenever I come in here on this template, uh, I'm going to cut a radius with the three quarter inch router bit inherently. So it's a flush trim router bit, three quarter inch diameter tool. And I'm going to come around and cut these radii in here. So I'm going to cut three eighths here and got a three quarter inch diameter tool here. So this will sit in there and be nice and trim around the outside perimeter of it. It's something I've wanted to use and something I've been prototyping for myself. So there's some kinks to work out on it, but this interchangeable radius on the nose of this base plate is really nice for me to switch out some things and change the different radii that I want to use. Cam levers clamp on the material, keep it kind of nice. It's a work in progress for sure. Definitely not product worthy yet, but it's getting there. So now today I'm going to cut the recess of this about a half inch deep to match the thickness of the plate. Once that's done, I'm going to drill some holes along the side of this plate and round the corners off to match what this will be. Still need to drill the holes for the base plate of the router so it'll match on the bolt circle for that. So it's a few things to get done. I'm going to put threaded inserts on the recess inside here so that I can screw this down to the table and then I can remove it if I want to as well. Now, if you'll allow me to wax philosophical for a moment, I have some thoughts on failure. The universe is always trending towards chaos. We always strive for perfection and have our plans, but sometimes fate has another way. It could actually be the universe telling you something you are making needs to be a certain way. Then again, I could just be justifying my problems. Either way, when you mess up, adaptation is key and you can most likely fix anything with a little imagination. When you do things right, People won't be sure you've done anything at all. I'll probably regret this, but what I'm going to do is drill out these holes a little bit larger and then clamp down my router and then plunge with a three quarter inch round bit just to try to make this a three quarter inch hole because I don't have any drill bits with a half inch shank that fit in any drill I have to clear this out. So without taking it back to a mill or something, this is the best I can do in my own shop. So wish me luck. so ugly.
printer. Hello, Mr. Meandris. Can you print me a right angle bracket with a slot about 5 sixteenths wide on one flange and then two 5 sixteenths holes on the other flange with maybe a gusset connecting the two faces? That shouldn't be a problem. Hmm, you can. Okay. Do it. Processing. Okay, that was actually pretty good. Do you think you could make a vacuum attachment for a two and a half inch diameter hose for a standard wet vac that'll hook on the back of this fence and enable to pull chips away? Absolutely. Really? It's quite easy, really. I can also optimize the aerodynamics for maximum chip removal. Okay, I'm... I'll have to see it to believe it. No need to get cheeky. Processing. T. Earl Grey. Hot. Bloody hell, Picard. I hope you like microplastics in your tea. Star Lord. Finally. You said 2.5 inches. on a field of victory, enjoying a few well-earned comforts. The salted pork is particularly good. Salted pork? <laughs> 